I'm sure Pans has a lot in store. Please welcome to the stage Dennis Crowley from Foursquare and Matthew Panzerino. Oh, these chairs are great. Comfortable. Yeah, I forgot how awesome they were. Um, Hi. So, hello. Hello, how are you? All right, pretty good. Great, thanks for having me. Good, good. Yeah, this is the part where we pretend we didn't talk for 20 minutes backstage just now. <laughs> We're doing a great job at it. Yeah, uh, so Foursquare's data. It's arguably its most uh, valuable asset, especially outside the company. So over the past few weeks, you've been making a kind of a series of moves to better monetize that data. Um, you ha you've had the ad network for a while, obviously, but you just added um, Pinpoint. Yeah. Um, you cut a deal with Twitter and Microsoft yep. to use your data. Uh, what's next? What's the next way you're going to kind of formalize that? Uh, well, you know, we've been kind of working on this stuff for for uh, like a long time. It's not like, oh, wow, just kind of waking up to the data assets. Um, it's been really, like, you know, something we've been working on for the last like four or five years or so. Um, you're right in the fact that, you know, we've done some data licensing with Microsoft, like it's happened with Twitter. We're always having interesting conversations with all these other developers. We actually have more than 80,000 people that are now using the API. But everyone's been pulling off little pieces of it. Um, and so what we're starting to do is formalize it. Um, and we formalize it into something we call the, the Foursquare Location Cloud, which is like our POI database. It's the Snap to Place technology. It's the search and recommendations engine. And you know, you're going to hear us start talking more about, hey, this Foursquare Location Cloud is really like one of the core assets that we have as a company. And everything that we do pulls off of that. Foursquare pulls off of it. Swarm pulls off of it. Foursquare feeds it. Swarm feeds it. You know, Everyone that's using the API is kind of pulling off of it and putting back into it. So this really is like a mapping story. company's equivalent of their, uh, you know, their routing and streets. Yeah, that's a, actually a great analogy. You know, it's like people always think like, oh, where do you fit into the maps layer and the map stack? Well, like we don't have the tiles, we know the routing, but we do have all the POIs, and we have this ability to understand which POIs are going to be interesting to you versus me versus all of you folks. Uh, and then I think the thing that's really most important is this understanding of like where phones have been and where they're likely to go in the relationship with those places. And that's like the secret sauce that allows us to send all those push notifications about, hey, your phone has never been in this neighborhood before. What can we tell you? Hey, your phone has never been inside of this place before. What do you need to know about it? And that stuff is, is really valuable and I think going to power a lot of interesting services in the future. So you mentioned you've been working on this for four or five years, but it seems, I mean, Foursquare is in technology company terms. It's an aged yeah. company or a finely, uh, uh, you know, mold company. Finally, like a finely matured one. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so why is it kind of, why has that roadmap been so long to take this, which is obvious to everyone that it's actually really valuable data? Because yeah. every big company, Foursquare obviously is doing it, but every big company like uh, Facebook, Google, Apple, everyone has these sort of stacks and stacks of location data. It's integral yep. to their future. So why is it taking you so long to offer what you obviously feel is a superior product to them. Yeah, well the POI database is, it gets better every single day. Like literally every every day, every week, like this like we're getting, you know, more freshness signals. Um, you know, we're learning more about the real world. That stuff is constantly evolving. It's been doing that since the early, early days. Um, I think what's um, uh, you know what's been kind of tricky is you know, you think about like, you know, going back to the early days of Foursquare, we wanted to offer this service where like when you walk around the world, your phone or some device buzzes and teaches you about things you don't know about yet. And when we started in 2009, like, that's what we were going to build, right? Like every time you check in, you'd see a little message pop up and eventually it's like, you won't have to check in, the message will just pop up wherever you go. And I really thought that stuff was going to work in like 2011. Uh, 2012, but like the phones weren't good enough. Like the geofencing wasn't good enough. Um, you know, like what we could get off of Android and iOS wasn't good enough. And I remember having this moment right around the time when the iPhone 5 came out, um, no, iPhone 4S with iOS 5, thinking like, if we really want to do this, we have to build all of this technology. We can't just rely on what, we're go what Google's going to give us, what Apple's going to give us. We have In to terms of like location uh, well, co yeah. uh, confirmation. Well, yeah, the, like whatever we were going to get from the APIs, um, you know, from those, you know, from those mobile SDKs. It's like we're going to have to build this stuff on our own. And then starting in 2011, we got really, really serious about it, started building out all of these shapes that are designed around like the pattern that we see check-ins emerge in, building our 
own stop detec detection algorithms, getting really smart with search and recommendations. It's just taken a really long time to build this stuff. And it's really only now in the last like year, two years, that we've been able to really offer these push recommendation services. I don't know if people in the room have seen it, but like, you know, if you're running Foursquare on your phone, and as you start bringing it to places, traveling to new cities, traveling to new neighborhoods, we can, we can learn. We can learn about the places that you've been to. We can understand the businesses that you walk in and out of. We can pop up messages that teach you about things you wouldn't know about. We do it on the phone, we do it on the watch, I want to do it in the car, like whatever the next awesome device is a year from now, I want to do it on that thing too. So you're talking a lot about consumer facing stuff here, where you tell the person, hey, you know, there's some interesting things here you should check out, or you've been here, or haven't been here, that kind of thing. Uh, it seems at the moment you're dealing with a lot of, uh, rolling a lot of products that are, you know, business to business, uh, or, you know, you're <coughs> using your data as a service for people, or, or building it into a service for people. So what kind of company is Foursquare today? Is it primarily a business to business service company with a consumer front end that offers unique features? Or is it the other way around, and, the, and that's just to serve the consumer front end? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. It's, a, you know, we're a technology company at heart. Like we've got, you know, a team of, what, 80, 85 engineers um, working across two different offices now. And, you know, what, what we've built is valuable to a lot of different players. And so, like, we didn't expect to turn into a data licensing company, but that's a big part of, uh, of our revenue story. We didn't expect for the API to be as successful as this, but we've got, you know, more than 80,000 developers that are using it. Um, but again, like, you know, when we started the thing, we're still, like, at you know, at heart, product people. Like, I love building the experiences into Foursquare. I love the stuff that we just launched yesterday with Swarm and bringing, a lot back, bringing back all the fun into the apps. And, you know, I feel like it's, it's our job to build not only awesome consumer services that teach people this is what the future of what mobile and location is supposed to look like, um, but also build the back end that powers a lot of these, you know, not just a POI database, but the, the layer of contextual awareness, you know, even everything that we're doing with Pinpoint in terms of helping making, you know, ad markets a little bit smarter. Because if we don't build that stuff, no one else is going to build it. And if we have it, we might as well share it with as many people as possible. So what's your revenue mix right now versus, uh, you know, between Foursquare, like ads on Foursquare, which is the consumer app generating revenue, versus these partnerships and, and other efforts like Pinpoint and stuff like that that you're adding on to yeah, the ad it's, network. It's always been a good, healthy mix of ad products that you see in both Foursquare and Swarm, uh, data licensing, and what we've historically called um, you know, off-network advertising, which we've had a product um, for a little bit more than a year called FAN, like the Foursquare Audience Network, that has allowed advertisers to reach Foursquare users, not on their phone, but like when they're out there on the web. And that's been very, very successful. And you know, the advertisers have been really excited about the fact that, hey, I can reach a coffee drinker on the web, and I know there are coffee, like they go to tons of coffee shops or gyms or airports or Toys R Us's or shopping malls, whatever, they know that from Foursquare data. Um, but they've always been interested in reaching more people than are just Foursquare users, which is what the Pinpoint product is all about. So it's not like, can you give me a ballpark, like 60-40? Is it 50-50? Between, um, oh, between, well, it's, we, we need to uh, give us a little bit of time so we can figure out how well the Pinpoint product is going to perform. Like, we're really bullish about that. And that launched but last week? That launched, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, uh, so we're really, really excited about that. But, you know, in terms of, you know, the other breakdown between ad products and data licensing um, and the off-network stuff, it's pretty evenly split. Um, I don't have the pie chart here. We show it um, at board meetings and we show it to partners. And I think one of the things that our investors have always been really excited about is like, hey, it's not just like one cash cow of a revenue stream. It's split very evenly between all these pieces. You know, another part of that is like, you know, international uh, merchant services. So we have all these different pieces that are starting to work really well together. All right, so let's shift gears a little bit. We've talked about product a little bit. What do you, at this point, if you've raised a, you know, a significant amount of money, 160 million-ish, I mean, who's counting? Um, but at this point, what is your definition of success for Foursquare. I mean, there are only a couple of viable end games once you raise that much money, right? Yeah, this has been, um, you know, we talk about this a lot as a company, at company meetings, um, you know, with the, with the staff and whatnot. And for me, it's always been, um, it's always been how do, you, how do you build products that touch hundreds of millions of people, um, you know, around the world? And it's, it's never been about the exit, and it's never been about like, oh my god, we got to get to this, this IPO stage. It's about, let's just continue to make awesome products. And we're finding a way to do that with our own apps that we've built. And I think more importantly, we're finding a way to do that through a lot of our partners. You know, like, does Twitter get a lot more interesting over time be because we're, you know, powering a big part of the geo service? I, th I think it does. Um, does what Microsoft is doing with Cortana, um, you know, in pulling off a lot of our location services, does that stuff get really interesting? I 
think it does as well. Like, I'm really excited about not just the growth of our own apps, but how we can help other companies achieve like, really interesting things that have just never done, been done before with location awareness, you know, contextual awareness, proactive notifications about things. Like, that's the stuff that gets us really excited. So you feel like with those offerings to those companies, you have, uh, you have some runway to build that revenue through those partnerships, and you're going you're gonna to work on that to, to build a company. Now, if you had an acquisition offer, as I'm sure you have in the past, right now, say from Yahoo, would you take it? Well, it's, I mean, we, we talk to companies all the time about this stuff. Like, we have like, these amazing technology assets, these amazing data assets, and I think it's very easy to see how it can fit into other, um, you know, can play very nicely with other companies. Like, it's not, hey, if you get one, will you take it? It's like, we have a very clear vision of what we want to do. And we're building these services that no one's ever built before on technology that's never existed before. And like, we really enjoy doing that. Like, that's a really fun job to have. Like, you know, how long will it take Foursquare on its own to reach hundreds of millions of users? You know, we're getting there. It'll take a while. If we team up with another company, does it make it easier? It could. But like, what are those products going to look like? Like, what are the companies that we can work with where like, we can really build interesting stuff together? You know, like, these are conversations that we've been having since, you know, 2009, 2010 with people because they've been excited about the vision of what we want to build. And I think the thing that's different now versus then is the stuff that we were talking about then was just fantasy. And the stuff that we're, you know, the stuff that we're building now is like we're actually executing on the stuff that we said that we would do five years ago. So you were talking about uh, in the early days, you like had this vision for this thing and you couldn't execute on it because of like technological limitations sure. or ecosystem. So do you think like the early, a lot of the early hype you know, you on the cover of Wired and a Crown, all that stuff. Do you think that was like a net negative over time? We'll never escape that. Will I? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Do I think it was a net negative? No, I think all that stuff is what, what kind of, um, you know, helped us get to where we are. Someone asked me this the other day, like, hey, do you regret doing the game mechanics in early Foursquare? I'm like, no, I don't regret that. We learned a ton from it. It was awesome. It inspired a whole bunch of other people to do, like, you know, making, um, you know, making, making games into apps, making apps more playful. Um, I think everything that we've done... Um, over the last six years has led us to the position that we're in. And actually, like, I think we're in a pretty good spot right now. Like, we're doing the things that we said we're going to do. You know, we, we're sitting on this mountain of, of amazing data and amazing technology. Uh, you know, we've turned into a real viable business that has multiple interesting revenue sources, advertising, data licensing, and everything that we're doing with the Pinpoint product. And we continue to execute. Like, we've launched like, four different products, five different products, in the last six weeks. Like, we're doing really well right now, and it's been a lot of fun. So as this sort of aged company, um, finally aged, you've gone, through, aged. you've gone through a lot of the press boom and bust cycles, right? I mean, so one minute Foursquare is dead or dying, and yeah. the next minute Foursquare is the savior of location data for these big companies <laughs> that can't do it right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it seems to go, people seem to love that. I mean, our tips inbox is ridiculous with Foursquare, like, oh, you know, this oh, I bet, yeah. tombstones and whatever <laughs> else, right? So how do you stay focused through all that? Like, what's your, what's your trick to saying, like, we're still going to build products and the way yeah. you talk to your team and that sort of thing. That's, it's, it's all about just developing a really thick skin, I think. Um, and I, you know, I try to meet with entrepreneurs and, and other folks that are you know, trying to get startups off the ground all the time just to like, kind of relay this message. It's like, listen, if you've got something you want to build, just go out there and build it. If it's really good, you'll get rewarded for it. People will use it. Companies will love it. And if it's not, people will tell you and then you go back and retool it. But if you just kind of listen to what the press or the outsiders are saying about you and what people are saying on Twitter, uh, you'll just drive yourself bananas. You know, you just have to look past a lot of that stuff. I mean, that, that's been a difficult thing for us. Like, I, I totally recognize those cycles. Like, we've been like, you know, um, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, and all of a sudden, oh my God, these guys aren't going to be around another six months. But what they're doing is absolutely amazing. You know, it just keeps going and going and going. And it's like, it will drive you nuts if you really pay attention to it. Um, and I think the reason that we're not fully nuts now is because we don't, like, we, we don't so want just to... just half nuts, not fully nuts. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're like, we're a little bit nuts, but not totally. <laughs> like, you got to be nuts to build some of the stuff that we're building. But, yeah. like, you know, it pays off over time. So let's talk about Apple Watch a little bit, um, because I have one and I want people to know it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the, the Apple Watch is... Oh, is this so honest, <laughs> yeah, by the way? <laughs> you know, I'm just going to be honest. Um, so the, the watch was an interesting... I mean... I think a lot of people are misunderstanding it so far. That's my personal view. Uh, but some of the experiences that I've had with it so far, I have an inkling of, hey, this could be something. And one of those was the other day with Foursquare, because I have been installed. I am a Foursquare user. Yeah. I'm a, a heavy one. I would be sad to see it go away. Um, the, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, the, 
alert that I got was I was walking between one neighborhood and another on my way to a coffee shop. Yeah. I got an alert on my watch. I looked at it and it said, hey, I noticed you've moved into this neighborhood. You've saved these three places on your list. Yeah, yeah. And I then veered, you know, instead of going to the place that I was, which is just some, you know, random coffee shop, um, I went, you know, to one of the places that I had, I had wanted to go for a long time and had marked in New York that I wanted to go yeah. there. Uh, so that kind of temporal notification I felt was a good sign that there's something interesting there. So how did you approach building for the watch, both for Foursquare and for Swarm? Um, you know, I think that we, we knew what we wanted to build. Like, we knew what we wanted to build years ago. We were just waiting for the hardware to do it. Um, you know, even though we're pushing those notifications to your watch now, like, we've been pushing to the phone for years. And it's just been like a really, like it's been a, a struggle and a grind to get them working as well as we wanted to on the phone so that then when the, it was time for the watch, a watch, any watch, and we did this with, you know, with the, the Google watches and the Motorola watches, but no one was really paying attention. And now everyone's paying attention with the Apple watch. But I feel like by the time that thing was ready to ship, um, you know, we, we, had, um, we had a lot of those pilgrim pings, as we call them. We had them right where we wanted them. You know, I, I got one, it's interesting, like, I got one today on the, on the cab ride over, and it's like, oh, you're in Chelsea. You haven't been in Chelsea in a long time. These are the three things to know about. And, like, just the fact that we can send that message is, like, a big technical achievement. But at the same time, I'm like, listen, I got to go speak at this thing. I'm not going to go explore some of these coffee shops. It was a little out of context. And so I think we got another couple of years worth of work in getting those to be um, perfect. But like, I don't know how many folks have gotten those types of Foursquare pings either on their phone or on their watch in the past. But when they, when they work and like it's, when it's, it's at a place that you've never been to before and we give you something awesome, um, which is, you know, it can be like 40, 50% of the time, like that feels magical. That feels like a superpower. And like we, we knew this a while ago. Like the first time we got it on our Pebble watch, it's like, okay, that's, there's something really interesting here. We should double down on this. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that no matter what devices you're carrying, what connected devices you, you're, you have access to, like that's going to be a big part of it. Like services that understand where your phone has been, that can anticipate the type of stuff that you like, and um, can wake up and say, hey, Dennis, like, I know you're kind of in the middle of something, but there's something really cool 100 yards ahead of you. You need to know about that. Like that, no doubt, is that going to be a big part of like, what these devices and services do in the future. And, and do you think Foursquare is the layer for those companies? Because you've talked about it as a location layer. Well, I don't see anyone else doing anything even similar to this. You know, I look at what Google's trying to do with Google Now, and I'm like, they're just pushing stuff at me. They're not trying to make it super personalized. Like, I want the, th I, you know, I really want Foursquare to speak to you. I want this thing to say, hey, Dennis, like, whatever you're in the middle of, there's this thing around the corner you've got to know about, and, um, and this is why I got to know about it, and I think it's really interesting you should go check it out and then report back with what you think. You know, like, we talk about this, um, talked about this internally, like, there's a spectrum of things that have tried to have this, like, relationship with you. And on one side of it, there's, you know, Clippy, the paperclip guy, which no one ever liked, and he would pop up and tell you things. And on the other end of the spectrum, there's, like, Scarlett Johansson in that movie with Joaquin Phoenix, and she's, like, whispering sure. sweet nothings in your ear all the time. Yeah, and, like, we're, you know, we're better than Clippy, we're not as good as, as Scar Scarlett Johansson yet, but we're kind of right in the middle of, like, we can, we're learning about you, we can wake up and tell you something interesting. We want to do it in a fun, playful, flirty, snarky manner. And like, you're, everyone's going to carry this thing with them in their pocket. It's going to learn about um, you know, all the things they do, all the places that they go to, all the people that they hang out. Like, it's going to be awesome. And I think we are, like, we are way ahead of any other company at not only like, building the layer that's going to power that thing, but like, pushing it to people and like, making their phones buzz and making their watches bug and trying to think about like, how we're going to make other devices buzz so that people can actually experience this stuff. You know, it's no fun to talk about it all day long. It's fun to go out in the world and actually see this stuff exist. And that's what we've been focused on trying to do. Yeah, so, I mean, you've been in the New York... Sorry, that was a big crazy No, that's, that's okay. How excited that's I am about that stuff. I like it when people get a little out of control because I feel like I'm healing truth okay, rather good. than just, you know, <laughs> whatever your PR person told you to say. So, um, what, the New York tech scene has been around a while. We've got about a minute left. Uh, what do you, how do you think it's changed over the years since Foursquare kind of fired up here? And why are you still here? We're almost, where else am I going to go? Like, I like New York. I live here. Um, you know, that's the same answer we gave people in 2009. Why would you ever start a tech company in New York? It's like, because we live here. Uh, that's why. <laughs> and then, that's a good answer. Well, yeah. And um, <laughs> thanks. Thank you guys for getting it. Um, 
but you know, if anything, this, the scene has gotten so much stronger over the last couple of years. We don't hear that anymore. It's never like, we can't do anything with you until you move to California. Um, and it's not, you're never going to get engineers to, um, you know, to move to New York. We've built an amazing 150 person organization in New York. Like we have a you know, 30 person organization in San Francisco. We send people back and forth all the time. We have a little exchange student you know, program where you know, San Francisco people come and live in New York and vice versa. Um, you know, the scene has gotten, uh, you know, much, much stronger. Like events didn't, like this didn't exist five years ago in New York, and now it's a, it's a common occurrence. So, you know, I like to think that there's a whole, like, early generation of New York startups, like us and the Tumblers and the Etsys, and, you know, there's like 10 of us that have contributed to helping, I think, get the scene to where it is, and that's like always a, a good thing to look back at and be like, hey, that's, uh, we played a part in that. And the bagels are a hell of a lot better. And the pizza. Yeah, yeah. very good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dennis. It's been Appreciate fun, it. thank you. Yep. All right. <clears throat>